Okay, so here we are at our, our composting area. And so, because we live in a block of flats, we do community composting, where different residents come and bring their food scraps and get involved in composting. And, you know, they love it. They love, they love doing the, the composting here. If there's one thing that people want to do in a garden, they seem to really enjoy um, dealing with their, their waste from the kitchen. Uh, by converting it into a really high quality nutrient and uh, soil conditioner that we call compost. So there's lots of ways of doing composting. There's hot composting, where you typically need about a cubic metre of, of uh, volume to get sufficient heat um, in order to uh, create the, um, the, the hot compost environment. Um, Hot composting relies on aerobic bacteria, that's oxygen-loving bacteria. And to get that oxygen into the system, you need to be turning the compost every two or three days at least, okay? So that's for a hot composting system. Sometimes it's called the Berkeley method, um, but that's not what we've got here. So what we've got here is a compost bin which is open to the ground and it can be used for cold composting uh, where worms and anaerobic bacteria, that is bacteria that don't like oxygen, um, break down the material. It's not as good as hot, com as hot composting, um, but you still get a compost. Okay, the other thing to say about hot composting is that if it's hot enough, it'll kill all the, the weed seeds and bacteria. Um, uh, that might be in the might be in the uh, in the food scraps or the garden waste that goes into it. The cold composting system, uh, weed seeds generally don't get killed. Okay. So is it that that bin is not big enough for doing hot compost? Yeah. So one of the things about this bin is it's only about 400, uh, 400 litres. Okay. Um, now you can generate a hot compost with it, but you really have to work at it. Like every day, you're turning it over. Um, when you've got sufficient volume. So one of the beauties of a cold composting system is you can just add to it slowly. Hot composting, you need to start off with a cubic metre of stuff, okay? You can't add to it slowly. Cold composting system, you can, but if you continue to aerate it, and I'll show, I'll show, I'll demonstrate how that happens, uh, you can get a bit of warmth in there. And if you've got warmth, that means you've got um, aerobic bacteria the system okay um, if it's going really well you get steam coming out of it okay that's sort of the gold standard uh, if you've got steam coming up coming out of it I always get a, a big smile on my face if I've got steam coming out of the compost okay uh, sometimes it does happen with this system but generally this is either a cold composting system or what I call a warm composting system. 4.5 take one okay so let's have a look inside this bin. So you can see that people, including myself, have been putting things in the, putting food scraps into this composting bin. Uh, and you'll see that there's also um, some brown material, paper. This is a, for, a source, good source of carbon. Uh, a bit of cardboard in here as well. And you see there's a few little critters flying around as well. And I can actually see a worm uh, in our compost. So that's an indication that we've got a cold composting system. Worms won't go into the hot material. They, they love it cold. Okay. I see more worms in here. Okay. It's not smelling too badly. Um, sometimes in a cold compost system it can get really smelly. Um, and the, the remedy to, to fix that up is to aerate it. Um, I'll show you how that's done in a second. Uh, but also add more uh, brown material, carbon material, um, dry leaves, cardboard, news, newspaper, paper, that sort of thing. Um, the other thing to be careful about with compost is not to have your brown material too big or even any material. So I sort of say about the size of your, about the size of your hand, not, not including the fingers, the size of the palm of your hand, is about the maximum size for composting. 
I think the purists will say even smaller than, smaller than that, but in, in community composting, probably about the size of the palm of your hand. That's a little bit too, that's a little bit too big. And why are you breaking the things up smaller? Making them smaller because it's, it's, again, it's about getting oxygen into the system. You want a little, even in a cold composting system, I, I believe you want a little bit of oxygen in there just to help break down a bit quicker. Um, cold composting will break, break down in um, anything from three to nine months. <clears throat> um, hot, hot composting, uh, oh, four to six weeks. So you don't want to completely smother the whole system with really big pieces of, uh, you know, cardboard, for example. Um, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't throw that in. It's too big. It needs to be broken up, at least quartered. I would have thought. Um, so that's what we want to we want to do. So I've got some food scraps that I want to put in to the compost that have come from the kitchen. And you can see that's about half full. So generally, when we talk about carbon and nitrogen, the food scraps are the source of the nitrogen. And the brown material, the cardboard, egg cartons, paper, etc., that's the source of the carbon. And we generally want to create a, create compost, particularly for hot composting, not so important for so much important for coal composting, of uh, 25 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. Okay, and to achieve that, what I found is for half a bucket of food scraps, you want one bucket. Of carbon okay so it's a ratio of two to one all right because the food scraps are partly carbon and partly nitrogen yeah that's so, right. right yeah yeah so i'm going to put these in here we go and what have we put in so we've got some banana peel in there uh we've got some just peelings really uh, and we've got some eggshell so some eggshell there and tea bags. Now tea bags are interesting because you need to make sure that they don't have plastic in them. Some tea bags actually are made um, from plastic, oh. not paper. So mm. this type is a is one that's made from paper. Okay, plastic will not break down in a composting system. Mm. Okay, so I put in my half a half a bucket of food scraps, and now I want to put in a bucket. That ratio of two to one, so a bucket of carbon. And I'm going to tear up an egg carton. We've ripped up some carbon, some egg carton, and cardboard and brown paper bag and we've got now got a bucket of carbon so we're now going to add that into the compost and you know it's not so much important if you just want to do cold composting okay that you need to get that two to one ratio important in fact if you don't want to put in any carbon at all you don't have to it just might mean your uh, that's what I mean, your compost bin gets a little bit smelly. Um, and to remedy that, you need to add add carbon, dry stuff like this. Okay, so I want to aerate this a little bit. I want to create a warmer, a warmer compost. Um, so I'm going to aerate it using this little device, I sometimes called a compost mate. Um, but it's, a, it's an aeration device for for uh, compost, and you can see it's a bit of a screw, a screw action. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get this into the compost and turn it down. And it's going to screw down into the system.
kind of this uh, mix it all up. And you can see we've already got some good compost starting to form at the lower levels. You can compost um, pet waste, uh, no dog and cat um, excrement, um, but be careful that you're not, you haven't wormed your pets because those uh, vermicides that you're feeding your um, pets are not good for compost and certainly not good for the garden. Um, Likewise, with uh, livestock manures, they're great for compost. They're, they're great activators. They're full of aerobic bacteria. Um, but you just need to make sure that the livestock hasn't been um, treated with a, a intestinal vermicide. It's really important not to do that. Um, people say don't put in citrus you know, a composting system where you, we put citrus in doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, we don't put a lot of citrus in. Seems to be fine. You put in eggshells, but don't put in a whole egg. Um, whole eggs can get really nasty in compost, very smelly, mm. uh, form hydrogen sulphide, and uh, not good at all to put in a composting system. Um, if you're, if you're uh, using avocado, Got avocados. Um, make sure that you cut the seeds in half. Um, cut the seeds in half means that um, it'll it'll rot down. If if you don't do that, you'll get uh, avocado seeds sprouting in your garden, and you might not want that. Um, you can see here I've skewered what looks like an old um, piece of citrus, and what we want to do with all fruit that we put in that might be might have gone off is actually to cut it because that that won't rot that won't break down because of the peel so what we want to do is have a pair of shears or something similar nearby I'm going to have a look in here I can just cut that in half and that will help it break down a lot quicker there's a an old corn cob, I want to make that a bit smaller. And so that's what's going on there. And I can already feel a little bit of warmth in there. Um, sticks are not a good thing to put in compost. So someone in the block of flats has put in put in sticks. They'll take ages to break down. Um, so we don't want to put it, don't really want to put in sticks in a composting system, okay? Um, or if you do, make, it, make sure the sticks are very, very small. Um, so someone's put in quite a large stick and it will take forever to break down, um, possibly years. So you don't want to put that in compost. Other thing you find sometimes when you put uh, cardboard into compost is that the, the cardboard packaging will have plastic on it. Um, now that's not particularly great to have in, in the composting system. Um, so you know just try and pull that out and get rid of it. I'll try and take that plastic packaging off the cardboard before you put it in before you break it up um, as well. So there you go, if you have a look in there, you can see it's fairly well mixed now. Mm, looking good. Uh, looking good, yeah. yeah. Mm. All right. So there you go, that's a bit of home composting. Thank you.